Hello, my amazing fourth graders. I am so excited to see how much fun you guys are having with your optical illusions. And that is really important because we are learning all about space. And space is one of the seven elements of art that help us to make our artwork look more interesting and like real life. And our focus for our optical illusions are using the elusive technique of perspective, mainly one point perspective. And you can see that both of these artworks have that one point in the center where all the lines are pointing towards. Now, this is our second challenge that I have presented to you. You can either do this one or the one with the spheres falling down into the column. And I will go ahead and show you how we're gonna be doing this one. But this one is a very similar yet easier version of this. So if you are feeling a little uncomfortable with the idea of having your shapes be stopped in space instead of going all the way into eternity of the one point, you may want to stop at this point when I demonstrate. It will go from this to this. So let's get started with what our first steps are with both of these works of art. You're going to need a piece of paper and a ruler or some kind of straight edge, please. And in the center of your paper, draw a dot. This is our one point for our one point perspective. The next thing is you are going to be drawing a bunch of different shapes. So without noticing this pink part, we're looking at this purple part and I have drawn lots of shapes. So if you are drawing a circle, you can do that freehand. But if you are drawing anything with a straight, edge like a triangle or a square please use your ruler we want our shapes to be nice and crisp and clear you can even draw trapezoidal shapes or hexagons or stars it is up to you you are free to make any kind of shape I'm just going to do a few shapes here to demonstrate the technique of how we create the perspective. Okay, boys and girls, I have created just a few shapes on my page, but you are able to fill up your whole page if that is something that is interesting to you. The next thing that you are going to do is take your ruler or straight edge and you are going to connect all of the edges of your shapes to the one point perspective. And I always start with the shapes that are closest to my one point and then radiate out to the ones at the very edge. The reason is because as I'm drawing these shapes down to my dot, they are going to get in the way of the ones behind it. So this one here is gonna have to stop when it gets to the circle. I also notice that I don't need to do this dot at the very edge because it goes through the shape. It really, it almost disappears by the line of the shape. This one though is not going to get in the way from the circle. Let's rotate back here. This one, this one, this one. I'm gonna draw these lines pretty lightly because eventually I'm gonna want to erase them because I don't want them going all the way into eternity at the bottom. Now boys and girls, let's remember, I'm not gonna do this edge here because if I were to start drawing this, it would be going through my shape. Remember, we want our shape tops to be like the tops of the building. When you are looking at your building, you're not gonna see it x-ray vision through the top of your building. Nope, we don't need that line there. We just need the lines that will start from the outside of your shape and going towards the point. This one is real small of a sliver, but it is still there. Okay, boys and girls. Now, once you get to the point where you have done all of your shapes and they all go down to the point perspective, 
The next thing to do is to cut off your shapes. Now that does not mean scissors cutting. No, we are going to make our shapes stop. We want them to have the lines where they are like thick depth shapes floating in space, popping out at us. So that means that we need to take our ruler and do those lines where we cut the shape from going all the way down into space. And with a circle, we need to follow the line of the shape. So the cut off line is also the same round that the edge of the circle was. If I were to do this triangle over here, I want to make the line the same direction as the line of the shape. So it's not like this. That would not be the same angle as this line. We need to make it right at the same angle so that from here to here and here to here have the similar look of depth to them. So we need to do that to all of our shapes and you can make them as deep or as shallow as you want. So this circle, this cylinder looks quite deep, but I could make this cylinder look a little bit more shallow. We're creating the depth. We've got the height, the width, and now we are making the depth to make it look three dimensional, 3D. <clears throat> okay, boys and girls, so if you want, if you are unclear with how to proceed to this next step of making them all look as if they are just the form, the 3D form, you can continue to go down and add lines all the way down here to make it appear like this one. See how I have taken my cutoff line and then I've just continued it all the way down until it gets to the point of perspective. But boys and girls, if you are ready for them to all be separated from those lines, you're going to need to take an eraser and erase all of these lines heading to that point of perspective. So that will be your last thing that you need to do as far as drawing goes is erase all of those perspective lines so that you're left with just the floating shape. Just this part and the shape that you drew to begin with. If you want, you can take a marker and outline those lines to make them a little bit more clear. And in the next video, we will explore how we can color them to create a change in value for the different sides of our shapes. All right, boys and girls, have fun drawing.